was a top 10 program according to polls. They've fallen to 19th in the AP thanks to back-to-back -back losses. Try to get it right this afternoon in a series that dates back to the early 80s. Coach Bartow with his hands in both of these programs and playing in an arena that bears his name. Come on, Quinterly with the feet inside and a bump early on. And Malcolm Dandridge coming up maybe his best game as a Tiger. Draws a foul from Javian Davis. Malcolm Dandridge will try to bully you to set the rules of the game. And they put him in that middle ball screen. Just let this load just roll down to that low block. Andy Kennedy's got multiple defenses to go to. He's going to start this game off in man-to-man. -man. And Dandridge is a huge concern on the inside. Memphis third in the American at 81 points a game. Look at this drive. Uh, better than that in league goal. Their average jumps by five points. Blazers taking an early shot in transition. I feel, Jimmy, like any stop and then any subsequent bucket for UAB is going to take the lid off this place early on. And there's a steal and a chance to push. No numbers, no matter. The reverse is off the rim and a trip to the line coming. Tom Eric Gaines is such a long, fast, former SEC athlete now at UAB. And he is an explosive offensive and an explosive defensive player. Started his college career at LSU, an Atlanta area native. Giving him 12 points and nearly five assists a game. Not a great three-point shooter. Hasn't made one since the 2nd of January. So, 0 .08 from the three-point line in conference play is not great. Not great. First foul was on Nick Jordan for Memphis. Gaines has another one coming. 71% from the line. Preseason American Player of the Year. The lone returning starter for this UAB program, which last year made it to the NIT championship game. Gaines goes one of two. Andy Kennedy goes one, two, two, three-quarter court press. Memphis very aggressive, attacking pressure. Seldom are they content just to get it across the timeline. Jones with the feed to Dandridge once again. Dandridge had 13 and 8 with 8 blocks. And their loss Sunday against Tulane. Man, UAB's ball screen defense early has been exposed all three times. Meanwhile, Blazers attacking on the other end. Two misses at the rim. And now, bucket to Kel Lindeborg. Now, Lindenborg is quite a story. Hasn't been playing ball a long time, but a big-time athlete. He just, his oxygen is on that offensive glass, three and great. Memphis with a quick answer. UAB has only been over the 80-point mark one time in conference play. They've got to keep this game in the low 70s, if at all possible. Turnovers do not help. Good by Dandridge to get the pass away and a transition bucket for Memphis. What Penny tell us before the ball game? The last week of practice has been all about defense. Yeah, no three-point defense really let them down the last couple of losses. If Memphis is right in March, they are a legit Final Four contender. Nearly a backcourt. He said, listen, we've lost two in a row, but nobody's going to feel sorry for us. We've got to fix our own problems. And a mid-range jumper goes by Ephraim Butt and Johnson. Gives him 10 points a game. Memphis not wasting any time and a blocking foul on the other end. It's the first on Johnson. Penny Hardaway certainly knows this rivalry well. Sixth season as Memphis's head coach. Back to back trips to the NCAA tournament. You said they have Final Four talent. They do. And I, I've seen them at their best and I've seen them not at their best. But you know, Penny Hardaway has got everything you look for from an experienced JQ, Javon Crenley at the point guard, all day through that lineup. But they have not been right. And I thought Penny made a great point for every coach out there. He tolerated things in practice because they were winning that he would not have tolerated had they been losing. And he got that corrected this week. Took the blame himself as the head coach. Another one coming for Nick Jordan. One or two from the line, living up to his season numbers. UAB scoring 77 points a game. Not a great shooting team, but they do a fantastic job of getting to the free throw line. Damian Davis with the fall away. Memphis to run the lob to the cheerleaders. No hesitation. All gas right now for Memphis, ripping that ball off the defensive glass. 
And UAB, they're going to have to have tight ball security. Their shot selection today for UAB, just like last night when you played Alabama, it has got to be on point. No surprise shots today by the team in gray. Touch for Davis near the block. Working on Dandridge, who had eight blocks in a two-lane game. Little fadeaway hook for Davis. Caught really good pivot, right? Because the help defense came down by Jones, and Davis didn't get bothered by that secondary pressure. Loose ball. Blazers with a chance to push. And a chair by Gaines. Gaines very fortunate he didn't get teed up because there was no defender around. He chinned himself on the rim, and the building explodes. They're on their feet, Bartol Arena, nearly another steal. No whistle on a would-be push-off, and Jones rattles it home. First bucket for the fifth leading scorer in the country. Tom, he, Jones, gets off 17 or 18 shots per game. He just has a nose and a knack to find openings. You've got to stay attached to Jones and make him work. Where is UAB at its best in the half court? I, I think going right there to start with with Davis. He's a solid 10, 12 point guy. He can pass out of those that position, but Andy Kennedy trying to establish rules early around the rim on his offensive end. Von Quinterly started his college career playing for Jay Wright at Villanova, then a nice run with Nate Oates at Bama, SEC tournament most outstanding player a couple of years ago. A team of transfers for Penny Hardaway, and it's paid off. Jake Paul Walton from Wichita State with the bucket. Uh, UAB goes to drop coverage. Davis is dropping in the middle of the lane, and Walton just reads it right into that pull-up elbow jump shot. Tigers a perfect start from the floor, and a foul on the drive. 12-9, to Memphis with the lead. When we return, we'll hear from And then, see, here he is at the free throw line. You know, we missed the free throw early. We've had a couple of open looks. I was anticipating a few jitters, big crowd, big game for us. Our guys will settle in offensively. Andy, can you mess with the game defensively enough to interrupt uh, interrupt Memphis? Well, I'm trying to manipulate it as best I can, Jimmy. They're five for five. I'm not doing a very good job. I'm like, well, I, I, right here after this, make or miss, we'll go one, two, two, back to a two, three zone. Ball goes to the high post. We'll match up out of it. Just trying to, again, Memphis is so rhythmic offensively especially through Quinterly in this ball screen we're just trying to give them different looks hey 12 12 sorry if i blew you out no you're good hands, coach hands hands middle engine middle three two back up back up hey no hold for cg step up just step up jenny step up standards with a follow jam can't let them beat us for loose balls. Yo, yo! Two up twist! Two up twist! We can't let them beat us for loose balls, man. This is a possessions game. They're too talented if we let them beat us for loose balls. We got it here on the road. A little late. That's what we wanted. Max! You back button behind you! Yo, yo! AK, can you use Memphis's aggressiveness against them in the half court? Yeah, especially if they continue to run through it games. We just got to play aggressive behind it and take advantage of the situations. Yo, yo, flex, NJ, go, go. Got to shoot that in. That's the one I wanted to shoot, believe it or not. It may be the cleanest look we'll get this possession. Yo, flex three, flex three. Can't do that, man. Can't do that. E, E, E! You can't go behind your back, between your legs versus a double team. Yo, yo! Yo, yo! E! What are we doing here defensively? We're going to go 1-3-1 one, one off this. Again, different look. Different look. Make him go up. Go get him! Go get him, AJ! Try to create a little pressure. Sometimes you'll get a quick shot. Now we'll settle back. Match! Match! Now well, we're back in the man. With about 15 in the clock. This high ball screen has been problematic for us. And a shot from the corner for Anaquan Tomlin. Andy, what are you going to do with your ball screen defense? Because they, they've gotten they've gotten three or four looks off of it. Here we come again. You just got to play right here. You got to go. Got to go, Yaks! Two, two, two! Behind you, Yaks! 
communication harder in the building tonight? I'm sorry. Is the communication a little bit harder with the noise? I've got my sisters yelling in my ear, and their mic's louder than yours, Jimmy. Killing us. We could not get a stop. They're just pounding the same side. Things are way too easy. Through the trail! Through the trail! Keep going, AJ! We just got to continue to try to stay within striking distance by scoring the ball because we are getting no stops. AK. Yo, 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 yo! Execute! Execute! AK, you're good from the free throw line. How important is that to you to get there today? Yeah, we've just got to stay aggressive. I, I think we're, we're, we're trying to make the adjustment based off their double to stay, to stay aggressive. we got Buddy Johnson here. It's a good look for him. Get back! Match! 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 It's a clean look. That's all we can ask. Yeah. We just got to hope some of those go. And Tempo's actually not hurt us. We turned him over a few times. We just got to be able to get some stops. Butter! Good shot. Out of bounds. Hey, hey, hey! Butter, butter! Memphis 8 for 8, but 6 turnovers. Here's the pressure full court. Yeah, they, they push the thing very, very quickly. They push it very quickly. Yo, I2! I2! We're going to run Vasquez over a little Iverson cut right here. Got him down. He'll go, go, go. That's how we get to the foul line right there, but we got to be able to finish some of those. There's your loose ball. Man. Got to finish through. We got to finish through. Hey, 12 to 2 here. Make a miss. Andy, what do you like about that Iverson cut? What does it do for you? Well, it just gets us downhill, Jimmy. If they chase over the top, we'll just try to turn the corner as AJ did. We had a contested shot at the basket. It's a good shot for him, missed it, but because he was able to draw help and collapse the defense, Yak's got a point blank put back, missed it, now we've got to cash in at this free throw line. Make or miss here. Again, we'll change our looks. A little one, two, two, three quarter court. Back to two, three. Hey, E, aggressive, aggressive. James is good with his hands in the open floor, so I want him to be aggressive at the top of this and try to create uh, some semblance of disruption, maybe as we did earlier in the game, he could get his hands on the ball and we get out in the open floor. Andy, how many different defensive looks do you have today prepared? Seven, eight? Yeah, not really. About four. Okay. But, you know, and they all kind of morph into certain things just based on personnel groupings. Hands! Back! Back! It's off his leg! Ooh, that's off his leg, Ron. It's off his leg. Terry, Terry, Terry! Off his leg. He's... Ron Gruber, Terry Oglesby, Steven Anderson, the officiating crew today. Well, we got a great crew here tonight. Hands, hands, Chris, 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 JD. Good Daniel. But a short. First miss of the game for Memphis. Got to move the ball. Mm, I don't like that. That's a hand check foul. Open look. AK, you've had multiple looks drawn up that just didn't go. Does that get frustrating as a coach? Uh, yeah, I like the play. I, thought I like our push. We got a paint touch. Jack's with a great pass. Eric Gaines open look. We've had three what we call clean looks. We chart them throughout the course of the game, throughout the course of the season. Who's it on? And you got to be able to make about 50% of your cleans because a lot of them are going to be contested. Contested shots obviously are going to be made at a lower percentage. We've had some good looks. You've got to settle in and knock some of those down if you have any hope of beating up team the caliber of Memphis. Going to the bench here, but a Johnson sits with two. Andy David Jones checks back in. What, what's the problem that he presents when he's on the floor for Memphis? I'm sorry, guys, again. David Jones, what's the problem he presents to you for Memphis? Yeah, I believe you said the, the problem for us defensively has just been middle ball screen. We've been late. We call it time to win the point of attack. We've been late on the point of attack. Yes, you got the ball up. And as a result, they're making us pay. That helps us. We need them to help us a little bit. Hey, hey! Hey, hey! I, too! I, too! We're going to get Vasquez down downhill again. I'd like to get David Jones out of this game if he had fouled. Not there, but now we got this. Ooh, bad pass. We have a little pin down for Ortiz. 
Great penetration, great extra pass. There we go. Oh, shot the ball well six no. for 16 one of five for three we heard Andy Kennedy talk about that's the look we want and on those clean looks they just had some buzzards luck so far I love listening to Andy Kennedy defensively messing with the game is how he and I talked about it this morning just given four or five different looks David Jones with a steal for Memphis fifth best score in college basketball he does a little bit of everything for this Tigers team, which is 15 and 4, had an incredible non conference run. Good trap, but they find Quinterly out of it. And the three goes for Javon Quinterly. Yeah, Quinterly is shooting a really good ball in conference play. And multiple guys in that 45, 46%, and a good job to find that backside bomb off that double team. Daniel Ortiz for three. Tom, he's a specialist. That's what he brought guarding me in for from North Alabama. Like three out of every four attempts are from three. Walton into the paint. Aggressive take. Offensive board for the Tigers. And they're letting him go on the glass. And then a double dribble. Let me ask you, Jimmy, Memphis is so aggressive, especially with the traps. I understand the tempo perspective of it, but getting Birmingham the UAB or easy looks is that playing into UAB's uh, hands? I think that's going to be a gut call by Andy Kennedy to your point because This is the kid that knocks the three ball down a little bit of a side spinner on the rotation But it's a gut call by your head coach right now. Do I want to keep extending my pressure? I've seen 10 or 12 possessions of Memphis just driving it right through us and Andy Kennedy's been around the block. He, he won't stay with something that's not working. Here's Ortiz for three. Good Davis point. with the offensive rebound. Tony. Struggles from deep for this UAB team. Good transition deep for a moment at least. Walton for three. Lid's been on both sides so far. Memphis started this game eight for eight. Just one of their last six. Good feed. High percentage look and finish for Christian Coleman. What a great job to get Gaines coming on a, a jet, just a, a, a jet move to the ball, going full speed when he got it. A really good jet cut by Foreign Gray. And I said that Gaines is an SEC athlete, and he's he's phenomenal with the speed. He's that Memphis has dominated over the years. First met in 1984. Memphis has won 18 of the last 19. Tom, this is that 1-3-1 that Andy Kennedy actually got from Kermit Davis. When the ball goes to the corner, they'll reshape to a 2-3 or a man-to-man. -man. You don't want to settle for long threes like GQ just did. And they will reset back to the series history. UAB hasn't beaten a ranked Memphis team since Squeaky Johnson and company did it in 2006. Here's Coleman. Steps into a 16-footer. Got it. Yeah, didn't want to shoot it, but had to shoot it. I love Coleman. He's a, a great, yeah, he's a grateful kid, man. Found his way through high school ball without any offers and worked at Walmart for a few years. But a grateful, special kid. He was a 6'1 point guard playing high school ball in Louisiana. Once he graduated, took a job at Wally World, and he sprouted to 6'9. Finally found a home at NAIA ball, and now... Suiting up for Andy Kennedy and UAB after NAI, LSU, Alexandria, and then South Plains Junior College. Yeah, he's just a winning person, is what Coleman is. And he's when he's in the game, Andy Kennedy has a much 
more of a tendency to play that 1-3-1 with him up top. Tony with the drive. That pass. And it's saved off of Javon Quinterly. You don't want to think with your feet on offense. And both teams have done that in this game. What do you mean by that? Allowing their feet to take him way too fast into trouble spots. You want to slow your feet down with your mind. And right now, both teams need to back off just a little. Lasers on a 7 nothing run. Dandridge with the interception. And trying to bully his way in and is able to pick up the foul on the open floor. Tom, you cannot have a soft pass against these type of athletes of Memphis. That's a very soft high school hairy pass by Butter Johnson. And to your point, that's what Dandridge's game is. And he will test you and bully you and transition her in the half court. As well as anyone in this league. And the result is the second personal on Jamie and Davis. He's the second UAB starter to pick up two fouls here in the first half. Malcolm Dandridge out of Memphis East. He's been around for a minute. Got one more coming. He has been a big Monday doubleheader. Starts in blacks for Kyle Filipowski. Number 12 Dukes have survived against Clemson at home yesterday. They get Virginia Tech at 7 Eastern. Then it's off to the Moody Center in Austin for fourth rank Houston taking on Texas. Cougars defense has been horns down all season. We'll try to keep that going. Best defense in all of college basketball. Dandridge two for two. Texas is going to have quite a welcome to the SEC when it comes to the horns down and in this league the SEC where they're last night at Alabama just gets deeper and deeper in college hoops I know the football additions but hoops as well yeah, adding two ranked teams Oklahoma and Texas here's Jones Trying to thread the needle had it picked off by Daniel Ortiz again thinking with your feet with a basketball never a good sign Coleman well, he got the paint quickly. Rebounded by Naquan Tomlin, who was at Kansas State to begin the academic season. Jones with the cut, able to finish. Good hands. When you're the number five scorer in the country, you're just you're, you're more than just a jump shooter. And Jones can drive that ball. He's a force in transition. And he has, and that's when the, the towel games, the t-shirt games, all that stuff got started. With Cal and that Memphis squad, there was just genuine hate directed towards Cal and the Tigers. But man, were they a fun bunch to watch! And, and they seem to feed off of that. They do negative energy I, on the road. I, I, I think feel this, like great teams do. I think this Memphis team does here. I, I think they are energized by this UAB crowd today. Coleman got a reaching foul. And some dudes are just wired like that, and Penny's got a bunch of guys that just don't care in terms of the right way, in terms of where we're playing and who we're up against. His problem, Penny's heart, Hardaway's problem right now, they've got 10 turnovers in this game. Played, what, 12 minutes, 13 minutes? Just The game is loose and free, but you can't be loose and free with the ball. Watch out. They had 14 turnovers in the road loss New Orleans against Tulane on Sunday. A little extra time off for Memphis. In terms of prep getting ready for this one. UAB played Tuesday at Charlotte, lost by six. They led by 20 in the first half in that game. Charlotte went four for four from the free throw line in the last half minute. They're number one in the rankings in the American, which has been a surprise season for the 49ers. Here's a little 2-3 zone. Memphis able to attack it, but no finish. Ortiz finds the rebound. Lob. Whoa, that was aggressive. Knocked away by the Tigers. And now Memphis the other way. Nobody stops ball, and Jalen Young Jaylen finishes. Young. That is a big concern for UAB in this ball game. I mean, Memphis has just right through their transition defense multiple times. You've got to get back, Tom, build a wall and stop the ball, and then go from there. If not, Memphis is going to hang 90 on you on your home floor. Ortiz nearly lost it. Memphis, as you see, has gone away from the trap on Gaines. Hard hedge. Gaines with the kiss, and it's too strong. Lasers in a two-plus-minute scoring drop. The 6 nothing Memphis run. Blocked. What a blocking foul. The block was clean. On the floor, it wasn't. 
in any game, but especially this one, guarding the ball is of utmost importance because you've got multiple guards, Tom, that are just they're sizing their guy up and saying, I'm going to win my one-on-one -on -one matchup. And you open up your hips in this game, you got dudes that can get to the rim off of one bounce from 22 feet away. And that defensive rotation just can't come fast enough against those straight line drives of guys like David Jones. Jones fifth in the country in scoring 19 straight double figure games. He's got six now. Big Monday, SEC women's basketball on ESPN2. Angel Reese and number nine LSU go to Starkville to take on Jaquela Jordan and Mississippi State, which has won three of four. That starts at 7 Eastern. Then on Thursday, Big 12 women's matchup. Madison Booker, number 10, Texas, take on 13th ranked Baylor. And the Bears balance attack at Foster Pavilion in Waco. Coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, right after the Pro Bowl game skills showdown. Maybe Jones knocks them both down. Memphis has opened up a five-point advantage thanks to an 8-0 run. Davis inside. Didn't fall, but he's going to the free throw line. That's good action, though, because Memphis is downing Gaines to his strong hand. Gaines right-handed is a jet. So you down him to his natural speed with the ball and just roll that opposite big. Open up the lane and the ones you have to finish if you're Javion Davis. An excellent play call by AK. Davis, two different stops in the SEC, started at Alabama, then Mississippi State. 16 starts in Southeastern Conference play. Mississippi native out of Canton High School. Good free throw shooter in the best shape of his college basketball career. He played 41 minutes against Drake this year. He's been consistently getting 28, 29 minutes. He's fifth in the league in shooting. He's very efficient on the offensive end. Von Quinley has five points. Three ball. Can't go, under. Can't go under Hardaway. That's what he does. That's just easy money. And you go underneath that screen and get rolled down, you have no way to recover to the ball. UAB gets it in the paint again, but turns it over. UAB drought opening the door for a Memphis comeback. Hardaway with an air ball. Thought it was tipped. It was tipped by his left hand. He shot it with his right hand. That was the only tip involved. How can you make one in the next possession? Miss. He missed by three feet. He did. Well, maybe somebody left the door open. And Memphis with their own version of a 1 3 1. UAB should know how to attack it. They work on it every day with their own defense. In the paint again, draws a double, maybe a triple. Follows his own miss. Again! What an effort by Axel Lindeborg, junior from New Jersey. Tom, he, he's a very talented kid. His next step of progression is when someone lays the wood to him, how does he handle it? Because that time, he's going through contact. It's not his strong suit. Good job to switch that ghost action by David Jones. He's so good at it. UAB was alert and talked it out really well. Jones has seven points on only two field goal attempts. But he's watch turned his, it over four times. Watch Jones. He will run at the ball. That's what I'm talking about when he gets the, the wood laid on him. That's his next step as a player. But, man, he's got great hands and knack for the ball. But Jones will run at the ball like he's going to set a screen and keep on going. We call it a ghost screen, a smoke screen. He's really good at it, and it makes you talk it out quickly. UAB on top of that so far. A Memphis turnover. Late in the shot clock. UAB shooting just 38% from the floor, two for eight from three. See what AK has drawn up here. Andy Kennedy, second leading score in UAB history. A school record 41 points in a game against St. Louis University back in January of 91.
He didn't hold the ball long, touched his hands, and it went up usually. <laughs> School career leader right in three-point attempts, getting them up. Davis got deep and drill foul. I, I just like him in this game because he's got a big body. He's throwing it around. And the derriere of Zio and Greg. Man, I, there must be a really big TV right off to the side <laughs> of whatever basketball is being Let's shot. spin this game into some football talk then. All right. Your ball screen defense is the line of scrimmage on a basketball court. And also by playing zone, it kind of cuts down the number of times that Memphis can put UAB in ball screen action, which they have struggled with in this game. And the coach's point, Memphis is a stagnant zone offensive club. There you go. You can't allow that. He has a knack for that ball, man. As good as anybody in this American conference. The Axel Lindenborg only played 11 games of high school basketball. Playing the Dominican Republic select national team. Quinterly with an air ball. It's a second air ball from three for Memphis. Then he can't hit the layup. It'll be out of bounds off of Memphis. Yaxel Lindenberg had three straight games of 20 points and 15 rebounds in non-conference play. He's got a terrific set of paws. He's strong. His toughness is growing, but right now there's value in this game for UAB to get it on the glass and let three clean it up. Two-time junior college All-American, two-time rebounding champ. AK was walking us through his story at shoot-around today. Only played the second semester of his senior year of high school. His, both of his parents were great basketball players. His mom insisted that he go to open court tryout, and that got him some looks. and got him the opportunity then to play juco ball, and the rest is history. Yeah, he, he had actually committed to St. John's, and then with the coaching change, Andy Kennedy was able to go in there late and, and drag him to, to UAB. The interesting thing about his official visit to St. John's, his official visit host was David Jones, who now plays for Memphis. Both, <laughs> both from the Dominican. I talked with David before the ball. Give me some. I'm really close with Yaxel's parents. His dad is a is a star back in the Dominican in the hoops world. But the way things are connected in that recruiting, the life of recruiting, you match guys up and. Obviously, David did, good, did a good job. He had him committed at one point. The free throw coming for Alejandro Vasquez. Played two seasons at St. Bonaventure. Went to the NCAA tournament as a freshman with Bonnies. And he knocks them both down. Is AK going to go back to that 1-3-1? One, one. It's sometimes tough to get it set quickly off of a free throw like that. Vasquez with the foul. 3-0-4 to play in the half. Memphis came into this game, Jimmy, heavy favorites head-to-head -head against UAB. Penny Hardaway's team trying to avoid what would be the longest losing streak under his tenure. They've lost their last two. He's never lost three in a row. Blew a 20-point second-half lead against USF two games ago. And then lost to Tulane a week ago. So, Tom, look at the game. Andy Kennedy's done a good job of changing defenses also. I know the game has been hectic. Mm hmm but he has maneuvered the game enough to slow it down just a little bit. Memphis comes in averaging 85 points a game. I'd be shocked if UAB can get to 85 points today. Andy Kennedy agreed with me this morning. So he's trying to choke the thing down just enough to possibly keep it in the low 70s and mid 70s. He's on track for that right now if it just doesn't turn into a crazy last three minutes. Oh, oh, that, that's so good. The Iverson cut to the left side of the floor with a false motion to free Gaines up to get to a strong hand. Got a deep touch and a foul on the catch will keep it on the floor. And that is the second on Alejandro Vasquez. That last drive by Gaines, there was an Iverson cut right there to get everybody coming to the left side of the floor. Gaines knows the entire time. That's just false motion. That's just eye candy for Memphis to get drugged to the left side. Bam, right downhill. Really good play call again by Andy Kennedy. And is he playing that to get the switch on a bigger player like Hardaway or just to get that little bit of a window? That's a, that's a great question. It's, it's either way because he can attack it off of the switch or with his own primary defender because all the action is taken away there's no help defense you get the, one of the better athletes in this league going downhill Jordan Brown back on the floor for Memphis hasn't played 
in quite some time. December 2nd at Ole Miss. Last time he was on the floor. Almost like a you know, mid-season trade pickup. Brown yeah. gives him a couple of minutes here. Former five-star recruit was a McDonald's All-American. The same game with Zion Williamson before playing for Eric Musselman for a year, then going to Arizona for a couple. A long and windy road for Brown. Lendeborg, he has impacted this game on the offensive oh, end, and he does it again. He's got a game high 14. How low, fast, and strong was the sweep of the basketball from his left side to his right side to get him momentum going towards the rim? Really, really well done. Don't settle for a three right now, JQ, against this 1 3 1. Talking about cleanly. That ball's got to get below the free throw line, extended to the corners, and call the 1 3 1 off. Watch the sweep right here. Bam! That thing is low and strong. Just a whip move. Just whips his man and sends a message as well. UAB right in this game. They can't have a much better of a first half than they had. It's been back and forth. Four ties, seven lead changes. Blazers able to turn Memphis over 12 times yeah. here in the first half. That is one off of the Tigers' season average for an entire game. Jalen Young guarding Eric Gaines. Gaines for three. Doesn't hit many of these, wow. but he does now. Sometimes it's your day. He is shooting below 10%. In conference play from three. That is his first make in 18 tries from distance. Jones. Answer. Don't want to wake that sleeping dog. No, he is never rattled by the moment or the crowd or the noise. Double. And Coleman had a clean look. Watch Gaines again. He gets to that right paw and you back off of him like you should if you're David Jones No number says to jump out and to be high and hot on him and Anytime Tom you can reverse that ball in your conversion offense From one third to the opposite third you're going to get a good look or a guy playing off of a closeout and Memphis does it really well 125 left in the half reminder we will have Penny Hardaway mic'd up to begin the second half well, teams have taken advantage of the other's mistakes. A dozen points off turnovers for each side. Quinterly behind Dandridge's screen. Tipkin himself and drew the foul. Daniel Ortiz thought that Quinterly was giving the chicken wing and a little push off. Watch your left arm. Yeah, maybe. Quinterly is so crafty and good with that basketball. I mean, he's one of those point guards in the college game right now that can make really good passes in a small tight window I mean, he was phenomenal with those pocket passes in Atlantis the battle for Atlantis back in November former SEC sixth man of the year we talked about it last night Nados put Rylan Griffin on the bench and Rylan Griffin reached out to his former teammate said JQ what, what do I do how do I handle this and Quinterly did a good job of talking him through it and the Griffin kid for Alabama has responded really well. Did you watch hoops down there or just play with seals all day in Atlanta? Yeah Seals seals in the afternoon ball at night Quinterly's <laughs> got seven. He's had two game-winning threes this season Both in the last five seconds knocked off Tulsa and SMU with the clutch shots Ooh, the trap again And it's taken away by Memphis Good hands by the Tigers and poked away on the other side to Quinterly, and he stepped on the sideline. He had a free pass to the rim. And Tom, the turnovers, 13 for Memphis and 10 for, for UAB, just way too loose with the ball. If, if Penny or AK has a picture of their family in their wallet, I would bring it out at halftime and say, next to this picture right here, the most important thing in my life right now is the basketball in the second half. Does everyone understand? You could ask Kimber Kennedy and she would understand. She would say, yes, that's factual. Sometimes the basketball <laughs> maybe jumps up a little. <laughs> Lendeborg into the paint. 
Three Blazers on the offensive glass. And the foul goes against the Tigers. It's a second on Malcolm Dandridge. He's coming off of his best game as the Tigers got eight points in this one. I was talking to a couple of NBA scouts before the game, and they have some interest in this kid, Yaxel Lindeberg. 6'9, 230. They realize how young he is to the game. And one of the questions they said, they asked me is when he when he gets contact put on him, how will he respond? And I think he's been really good this half. Memphis has tried to be physical with him, knowing the scouting report coming in, but I mean look at the numbers he has already in this game. 15 points. And, Nine boards. He has been the most physical guy on the floor and a really good sign He's a guy that's been in foul trouble at times this season four or more nine times and three times DQ Has it picked up a single personal foul against a big Memphis front line? I remember UAB comes in averaging 74 points a game Memphis comes in averaging 85 so the, the pace the score right now Memphis on the road has it where they want it near steal Pressure at the midcourt line, and all alone was Dandridge. Tigers back up a deuce. Shot clock is off for Gaines. You spread it out, let Gaines go, right? Yep. Ignores the screen. Now five. Gaines to his left for three. He was 0 for 17 from deep. He has hit two in his first half. And the Blazers of UAB have a one point drop you on you a little bit, all right? Okay. Okay. First half with the trap on the ball. You go back to that here soon? We go back to it some, for sure. Where you want it in this building, David? So, we're up, so, 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 David. David Jones took a shot below the belt, getting a breather here. Trumpet! Trumpet! Jamie and Davis. Hey! Hey, get out, get out, get out, get out. One, two, pick and roll. One, two, pick and roll. Get over here. Make them switch. Here it is. Give it to him. It all started with a mismatch. Come on. They're coming from the baseline. Hey, we got to get into these one-two pick and roll like Quan just did. 
Penny, where are you trying to get them offensively? What are you trying to do to them? We're trying to get um, games on the, on the um, ball screen with our bigger guards, with our bigger wings, to make them have to start doubling. three from Jordan. Of the foul, Penny. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. 7:53 UAB with the lead. Threes for Ortiz. Career high four of them already in this game. Still plenty of time left. Andrews has given a couple buckets here in the second half, but short on the free throw. Just 56 percent from the line. Hey, thanks to both those head coaches for jumping on those. Mike, Mike's with us in live action. That's a a lot of trust for those guys to do it with us. I called Penny and asked him if he would do it. He's in the middle of practice. And to the point, he said, hold on a second. And he was hollering at his defense. <laughs> hollering at his defense. This is, hey, coach, what do you need? And ran it by him real quick. But big, big shout out to both those guys. That, that was good TV. David Jones is back on the floor for Memphis. He took a shot below the belt early in the half and had to take a breather. Ortiz again. Rebounded by Lindeborg. Back out for another three this time game. Huge triple and UAB with all of the momentum now. Memphis trying to get the mo back and they do it with a Jones bucket. And when you're a great scorer, you're a great scorer, but he also seems to have great timing in terms of putting a stop to street. Yeah, he does. A little bit of confusion for UAB after the make. And he, Kenny was signaling to his guys for his own press and just let a guy sneak behind. 
Oh, Sam Hill got challenged by Dandridge. And then the whistle. <laughs> wow. There is not a better overall athlete in the American Athletic Conference in any sport than this kid. Watch this punch at the rim. Pretty good job by Dandridge to say, not on my watch. Principle of verticality looks like Dandridge did a pretty good job of it, but Gary Gaines bringing the wood. It's the third on Dandridge, and it puts Gaines, the LSU transfer at the free throw line. I gotta say, watching that back again, that looked like a pretty clean I, challenge. I thought so too. I mean, Dandridge went straight up and down. You can do it as a shot blocker inside that restricted arc. And Gaines now has shown that he's seen a good rim from the three point line. Do you change and go under him like you've been doing all game and let him keep getting some clean threes? Or do you stick with what the numbers say over the 20 game haul so far? That's the decision that. Penny Hardaway is going to have to make. Yeah, I was talking to Coach about that recently. I said, when you have a shooter similar to what Gaines has been, when does the scouting report change? And he said, it's really simple. In the middle of a game, a guy can go from a non-shooter yeah. to a shooter. It's just our job as a staff to share that with the guys and say the scouting report has now changed. And another Memphis turnover. Gaines with the bounce out front. And a beautiful finish by Tony Tony. Largest lead of the game for UAB. Another steal. Lay the board with the bucket. I'd call one if I'm Penny. I mean, they're rattled right now. Hey, I caught you dancing to Migos yesterday. Are you going to go join them now? I could. You'd probably like that. I would love it. I mean, it'd be just good television entertainment. <laughs> there you go. On the road, you're, the building's rocking. Come out of that timeout and hammer that thing inside. A good play call by Penny Hardaway. 17 turnovers for Memphis in this game. Their season high is 18, which they've met twice this year. Foul on an illegal screen. Charge to Christian Coleman. Memphis, when they've kept the possession, has been fantastic this half. Six for eight shooting. Just haven't been able to get shots off. Andrews challenge right to his teammate. And another miss at the rim for the Tigers. Ortiz came out of there with it. Aiden Hardaway couldn't finish, neither could Dandridge. And he spent the week trying to fine-tune his defense. Do they have the defensive chops right now on the road to get back-to-back -back stops? Try to cut into this lead. Talking to a pregame, and he repeated what he said to the press throughout the week. He said, yeah, we've lost two in a row. We've lost some leverage, but we're not in panic mode. Is that change given the way they've been sloppy with the ball so far in this game? Well, the, the crisis part of this game is how careless they've been with the ball. They, they, they are in crisis mode in terms of the giveaways. And they've done so much work in the non-conference. Memphis and Fort Atlantic out of this league are solidly in the NCAA tournament unless they just lose out. It'll be a wide open American tournament. Charlotte currently in the lead. Quinterly forced a turnover on one shot. Now trying to get it going on the offense again. Nobody stops him. Grabs his own miss. And now Birmingham, the UAB Blazers with a chance to run. Gaines somehow finds Linda Borg. Back to the corner for three. What a night for Aaron Gaines. Hope is not a plan, but it worked out that time because he was hoping someone would be there on that reverse pass that Lindenberg found. Dandridge dishes. Lower for Naquan Tomlin to go. Dandridge working on a 15-point game, and he reverses it in. Tom, what a strong, fast move because the double team was coming from the high side. The double team's coming high. You cannot let Dandridge get to that baseline drop.
Here's Tony. Tony, Tony, done it again. He's got four. One of the coolest names in college ball, Tony Tony. Feels good. Jones, no. Here come the Blazers again, four on two. Corner three. And they get to the loose ball again. Butter Johnson again. On a roll now. Memphis got exactly what they deserved on that possession. They had guys standing and simply watching instead of defending. I mean, the lack of urgency in the SEC to close the night. Yeah, you're not being Lexington, Kentucky for the Tennessee Volunteers and Dalton Connect, who's a top five draft pick or top ten at worst against Kentucky, who went into Bud Walton yesterday during a game day situation and got out of there with a win. Kentucky not at full strength and. Boy, a monster matchup waiting in SEC on Saturday night inside Rupp. Penny Hardaway's team. In danger of losing its third straight, which would be a high for Penny as a head coach at Memphis. Tom, you mentioned within a game, sometimes you have to adjust how you're guarding a guy. Well, for Andy Kennedy, you have to adjust your thought process because this morning at 11 o'clock, he was thinking, can we keep it in the mid-70s? Well, they already got 73. Like, keep the gas on right now. Offensively, it's loose. It's flowing. Stay aggressive right now if you're UAB. Memphis with the takeaway. Tomlin comes out of there with it. Jones wants it on the wing. It will stay with Memphis. Thirty three turnovers combined between these two tonight. Dandridge got displaced and that foul charged to Jamie Davis, which is his fourth. No, Davis had backed off a Dandr uh, Dandridge. Knowing that he's not going to pull up from that 14 15 foot mark, but what it allowed Dandridge to do is get some momentum and that Charles Barkley bump with that shoulder. The call goes in favor. Watch out. Yeah, yeah, that's falling asleep and lack of awareness. And a hard, violent cut by Tomlin off baseline out of bounds under. And now the pressure in the corner of the trap. The trap at midcourt again. Wow, aggressive look from Bunna Johnson, his second three this half. I just think if you're Andy Kennedy, you gotta, you gotta keep feeding your guys confidence to take open looks. I mean, an open look miss is better than a turnover, which to your point, 33 of them in the game right now. Yeah, he's knocked down five threes this half. They came in averaging six threes a game. Big time block from Christian Coleman. Well, now it's UAB playing with some swagger and confidence in this one. Butter Johnson had to sit for a good chunk of the first half in foul trouble. Gets it back here. Well, I thought that was going up. Vasquez flying pass to the bench. I'm not sure what Vasquez thought or what he saw. That's what I'm talking about. You're going to trap the life out of Eric Gaines. Gaines is a long arm point guard, so he can beat you over the top of that trap. And Buddha Johnson just steps into a rhythm three. Oh, another turnover for Memphis. 18th of the game to tie a season high. Gaines, beautiful bounce pass. And a whistle on the layup. And the Blazers going to the free throw line. Gaines is playing like this is shirts and skins in the summer. There is no pressure at all on Eric Gaines. He, he is freewheeling and dealing. His speed has been a problem since the opening couple of minutes. It's a third on Nick Jordan. You know, one thing I appreciate, multiple things about Eric Gaines. Coming into this game, he was the number two defensive rebounder for UAB. Your point guard getting in there, involved in the fight, scraping down. Not afraid as a thin kid to get in there and get involved with a body blow action that takes place on the defensive glass. Much respect for that in his game. 
That's been ninth in the American in free throw percentage at 82 percent. Pulls the net twice. And Daniel Ortiz replaces. So in the first part of this half, Penny tried multiple times to get his bigger guard switched onto Daniel Ortiz at six feet or Gaines at six two. Gone away from that ball screen. Here's Jones, fifth leading scorer in the game. And he turns it over again. Behind the back gain, step through. And the loose ball. Thought Memphis was out of bounds with it, but Jones is able to corral five on four for the Tigers. Jalen Young downhill. It's turned into a pinball game. Push out front. Transition three, no. And a whistle on the drive from Ortiz. This feels a little bit like the championship game at the Peach Jam. <laughs> Tonight at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, following our game. It's on ESPN on the app. Our X Games coverage wraps up from Aspen with the men's ski super pipe and women's snowboard big air. They go for that two paw push, Jimmy Dykes. The big air it always comes down to who can throw the best 1980 or the best 2160. Rodeo 540s, all this stuff I've learned this weekend. I'm infatuated with that big air in the X Games. Ortiz a little off balance. Have you ever thrown a Rodeo 540 on skis? Um, no. If I did, I didn't do it intentionally. <laughs> Foul on the drive. That's Gaines, and it's his first. Jimmy, how about the job of Eric Gaines tonight? What did you say? He had missed his last 17 in a row yeah, from three points? 17 point. straight. And once a guy like that makes a couple, man, the entire game opens up. And he's playing with an all AAC confidence right now at that point guard spot. He's a durable kid for as thin as he is. His motor does not stop for 30, 35 minutes a night, whatever AK needs out of him. Tigers in the bonus. Another one coming for Jacon Walton. We've had 12 lead changes. UAB torching the Nets in the second half. And the Blazers with 21 second chance points off of 14 offensive rebounds. Mm. Axel Lindeborg has a double double, his eighth of the year. Walton Sr. from Columbus, Georgia. Started his college career in Georgia, ended up at Wichita State, now Memphis. And there's enough offensive firepower for Penny Hardaway's guys to come back and win this game. And, and Walton is one of them. 58% from three in the last three games coming in. UAB better stay tight defensively to close this one out. It's a Memphis team that was 10th in the country just a week ago. Their highest ranking in January since 2009. Tom, I was talking to the officials during the half, and this is the type of a pace game. Normally, a normal pace game, the officials will run between three and three and a half miles. The pace we're playing with today, they'll be pushing close to five miles if they wore a Fitbit. Wow. And you talk to officials that have done it some, and it's remarkable how much energy those officials have to put into a game as fast as this one. Gaines has it rejected. They count it. Goaltending on Dandridge. Little floater. Gaines is 21 now. You might as well be trying to stay in front of a squirrel <laughs> with Eric Gaines. He's he's so long. It's 6'2 with long arms and a long, fast, explosive stride. Here's Quinterly for three. Memphis trying to get back in this thing. That's the first bucket this half for Quinterly. They've got more than enough offense. Now, Memphis, all week long, do we have the defensive toughness and grit that we're going to need in March to be a major player? We're fixing to find out with 7.45 to go. Wow, easy solve of the Memphis press on the Lindeborg layup. He's got a, He's got 20 now. Such a luxury when you have a 6'9 guy that can play the middle spot in your press breaker, throw it to him, and let him finish. Quinterly has it rejected. 82-69 UAB with the... Just jumped up and stuck one with .4 to go, a three-point shot that 
propels them to a win. You got to have a dude, man, if you're going to make a run. And that's what they've got for Atlantic last year. And Nelly bailed them out today. Big Z for Purdue, the original Big Z with a monster game, right? 26 and 12 today. Is there is there enough room in college ball for two Big Z's? I don't think so. You got a Big Z and a bigger Z. I was watching him shoot free throws today. The basketball looks like a softball. Like, and, and it's hard to do that. Next time you're in a gym with a softball, I don't know how often you do that. Try to shoot it. It's not easy. And he has really developed that. Ortiz was calling for it. His sidewinder misses off the heel. He shoots a slider. <laughs> the rotation on his ball, but it's gone in at a high clip today. Tristan Newton also with UConn today. He had 22 points, four assists. I'm all in on UConn, North Carolina, Purdue right now, Tennessee. Those four teams have my attention. It's a fourth on Tomlin. Meanwhile, Eric Gaines has been cramping up and a lot of work. The athletic trainer on the UAB bench, trying to get him stretched out. They've been working on both of his calves. Tom, that's a big deal. There's 635 to go and 11 12 point game. The guy's been doing all the damage Getting worked on the actual end board to the free throw line He had three consecutive 20 point games in Late December to January big Monday tomorrow night Duke will be on the road into Castle Coliseum to take on Virginia Tech at 7 Eastern and then Houston and Texas Meet up at a Lone Star, a Lone Star showdown. Fourth rank Houston with shut down defense. Added again yesterday with an early win to really kickstart the college basketball day. Knocked off Kansas State 74 to 52. They've allowed 55 or fewer in 12 consecutive home games. Tom, that Houston defense is an absolute machine. And I was blown away before Christmas when I was down there to do a double header and Houston was involved in it. How all five guys, regardless of size, are constantly down in a low stance and constantly blowing up ball screens. Uh oh, watch Nobody out. Nobody back. Coleman with the hammer. What a major breakdown by Memphis again defensively in this game. UAB hasn't beaten a ranked. Memphis team since 2006 Mike Anderson was the head coach the point guard was squeaky Johnson It's been a minute But a Johnson gets the screen here's Coleman Johnson from the logo couldn't find the rim The only thing about that was a used clock <laughs> How about this press well Memphis they don't know what they're in you got three guys walking standing around and UAB says, says thank you very much and the lack of urgency For Memphis after a bucket to jump into whatever defense the call was made is glaring Better press on your dress shirt pregame. <laughs> thanks, thanks to the iron in your room. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. Teammates, roommates. <laughs> Taken away by UAB. Tony, Tony, off the window and in. I really like Tony, Tony. Love his name, but I like his game as well. His fourth year at UAB, just a consistent 20-minute guy. UAB has fed off this home crowd from the opening tip. I don't know if his middle name's Anthony, but his first name's Tony, his last name's Tony. And UAB, the energy they have played with, can they close this thing out? Largest lead of the game for Andy Kennedy's Blazers. Quinterly. Offensive rebound for Jones. He's got 14 in this one. Andy Kennedy, you still like keeping the pressure on, or with 4:40 to play, can you ease up a little bit? Well, he's he's doing slow play calls now. He's not calling plays that are one or two passes. He's moving that ball, but 
good grief. You got to keep scoring. You can't keep throwing it to the team in black. Turnover number 19. Jones with the reverse. Tom, coaching is so much of what your gut is telling you. To your point right now about Andy Kennedy and his offense, his gut from the last two possessions tells him move this ball right now. Memphis hasn't shown they want to defend after two or three passes, but you turn it over and all of a sudden you look up and this thing's got a chance to be a nine-point game. You know, the thriller in this series was in 2008 when Memphis came in 24-0, number one in the country. UAB had a lead late with about a minute and a half to go. Then Antonio Anderson and Chris Douglas Roberts hit a couple of threes. They worked their way back in the game before winning it. And now a corner three is good, and this Memphis team showing some late firepower. It's an eight-point game. And this is the first possession, Birmingham bringing it up, that they feel game pressure in a long, long time. Ortiz and Gaines saw the 20 on the shot clock as they set up their offense. Well, Gaines has been the guy off the bounce, at least getting to the free throw line. That's the seventh foul now on Memphis, so Gaines will have the one in the bonus. And the conference tournament will be a fist fight. And you know, Florida Atlantic and Memphis are the two teams that everybody's chasing, but coming in today, Charlotte's won seven in a row. SMU on the terrific defensive squads. Jones for three. SMU lost to Wichita State on the road today. today yeah. Huge win for the Shockers. Foul charge of Jalen Young. Well, free throws at the other end for UAB, but missed front end from Eric Gaines a moment ago. We we're talking during the break. The the tough decision that a coach has to make when it comes to do we keep the throttle down or we do do we back off a little bit? The risks associated with letting the favorite back into the game. If you have a chance to run off of your defense, absolutely. You keep the gas pedal down, but in that half court, you want to make sure you're understanding what a good shot is for us and what's not. Score time and momentum, Tom. Those three things dictate what is a good shot for us in a ball game. Back to back misses on the front end. Quinterly lost it on his way in. Says it's off of gains and will stay with Memphis. Got it inside, and they get a foul on Christian Coleman. It's his second. And so the Tigers go to the free throw line, trying to add to a 7 nothing rally. Tom, that can't happen. I mean, UAB, again, just not ready to play when the ball's handed to the out-of-bounds trigger guy. And they just get beat on a straight-line cut to the rim on the weak side. The clock stops. Memphis gets a chance for free throws. And big breakdown on baseline out-of-bounds under by the Blazers. I think Jordan oh. leaves it short. Tony fans out into the coverage, and Gaines is able to get out of it. Damian Davis on the floor for UAB. He's playing with four personals here with three minutes to play. Foul on the post, charge to Naquan Tomlin. And that's his fifth. You know, I like Davis in the first half on a handful of post-ups. And Andy Kennedy going to try to close this game out by at least getting the ball inside off the pass or off of a paint touch instead of quick threes. So Davis to the free throw line. Dandridge will replace Tomlin. Oh, pardon me, he's replacing Jordan. Davis two for four from the free throw line tonight. He's earned another. That ends a skid of back-to-back -back misses on the front end. Yeah, really good stroke, though, for a kid that big. 75%, I think, on the year coming in. I think he closes his eyes, maybe, in a little self-visualization. Or not. 
Maybe Andy Kennedy was closing his eyes. <laughs> I thought I thought for sure he did in the first half. Maybe he should stay with it. Winterly has it stripped away. Another Memphis turnover. The possession arrow belongs to UAB. Turnover number 20. Jimmy, big picture with this Memphis team that blew the second half lead against USF. Lost that game 74 to 73. That actually led that game by 20 twice. And they're unable to eke out a win on the road against Tulane, which hadn't beaten a top 25 team in its previous 53 tries. And now they come on the road and they turn it over 20 times in what feels like a must win to regain season momentum. Bounce pass inside and a block and a foul. And that's going to put Jamie and Davis back at the free throw line. Tom, until Memphis collectively starts taking the defensive end of the floor to another level, they are very suspect in March. There's a ton of talent on that floor. And the message from Penny Hardaway all week long has been a lot tougher with a much more of an edge to it. But his guys, in this, especially in this second half, it's got to be a collective five that are digging in with their heels, and I have just not seen it. The city feels they've been complacent on defense and conference play. Another free throw coming. Here's how Joe Lenardi sees it. This needs a little bit of explaining, but FAU and Memphis solidly in the field. They're the only two out of the American Athletic Conference that will be an at-large bid. Now, Charlotte is listed right now because they actually lead the conference standing, so Joe has the automatic qualifier plugged into his bracket, but... Charlotte as of now would have to win the tournament to be in Another way to look at that is if anybody besides Memphis or FAU wins The American tournament it turns into a three a three, lead. Absolutely. three on two for UAB Ortiz no And I feel like the way FAU has played had to eke one out at the end the way Memphis has played Obviously, they've struggled that conference tournament is going to be a free-for-all. Well, I'm anxious to see if Florida Atlantic recaptures their edge that they got last year in March. All the way to the Final Four. And with Dusty May earlier this year, he said, we have lost our edge for what we had last year in that Final Four run. Can we re re recapture it back on the defensive end? But Nellie Davis bailed him out today with a big-time shot at the buzzer. Blocked by Lendeborg. A little bit of trash talk. Another block! Landeborg got it in a scream in the face of the opponent. Gaines shares it again and shares it one too many times. It'll stay with UAB and Andy Kennedy not happy yeah, with the are, ball control. Tom, Tom, what are we doing? Is what Andy's thinking. You're up 10. You got this thing ready to ice it away and just careless, reckless with highlight plays in transition. Jump stop into the paint. Offensive rebound doesn't go. Memphis turns it over again. In high school ball, that's it. Didn't didn't get attracted to the, the game of basketball because he was into baseball in the Dominican. His upside, and watch out, as good as anybody in this league. Dandridge with the steal. Into the corner for three. Here's Jones. Memphis not done yet. Seven point game, 117 to play. It's a lot of length right in front of Lindeborg. Games gets it across the timeline. And they'll reset with Johnson as we approach the one minute mark. And a foul out front from Dandridge is his fourth. Stops the clock with 104 and sends UAB back to the free throw line. Really good job by Gaines to make a second cut just to get the ball in bounds. He, his first cut was to the left, right into his defender, which set him up for a hard solo cut to his right to get clear. So, but a Johnson at the free throw line. First free throw attempt of the game. Blazers came in with a high free throw rate, making 74% of them. They get 24% of their points from the free throw line. And that is 
help them keep this edge even when the turnovers have turned up and the jump shots haven't fallen. The name like Butta. You're smooth right here, are you not? There's a parquet joke in there somewhere. I just didn't go for it. Nine point UAB lead under a minute. Knocked off FAU, their last ranked win. And their first since 2013. That was last year. Twinterly, no. And no foul again. And that will be five for Dandridge. Andy Kennedy goes with length up top defensively and stays aggressive with it. And a good job to not foul in those trapping situations. Got those high hands. Of course, a little bit of a panic shot again by Memphis. UAB is 1 and 14 all time against a ranked Memphis team. You have to go back to that squeaky Johnson 2006 team, which knocked off number three Memphis, coached in by John Calipari. Davis gets it. Another one coming. Andy Kennedy is 20 points above what he thought he would need in this ball yeah. game at 11 o'clock this morning. Says a lot about how well his team played and a lot about the defensive effort or lack of by Memphis on the road this afternoon. They had 45 in the first half. We wondered if they could keep it going. Yeah. It felt like the offensive performance in the first half was tied to the atmosphere in the building. I agree. Jones will fire. Got it! And a collective gasp from the most likely to get open here. So a game that UAB led by 15 in the second half. They had opened up an 88 to 73 lead. There's a trap, and Gaines gets a timeout. Called for by Gaines. Not sure. Can't run that baseline, and now you have to fight really, really hard to get open right here. UAB still has a couple of timeouts remaining. The entry to Johnson. Here's the trap. Back to Gaines. And a push ahead. And they're going to go ahead and try and score. And they get fouled on the way in. And that'll put Yaxel Lindeborg at the free throw line. A good staying aggressive there with 36 seconds left. Yes, absolutely. And a good job by Andy Kennedy to put some speed at the timeline with Buddha Johnson. And have him be the pressure release as his press breaker. And you, you cannot turn down a 6'9 guy going at the rim like Lindenborg did. And you risk a turnover and that's make the free throws and start the celebration in, in Birmingham right here. Yeah, the 205 is going to feel this one. Last time you had a court storm behind you. Yep. Vasquez and Ortiz take a seat. Tony Tony and Coleman back on the floor and Ashton Hardaway will check in 36.4 remaining Axel Lindeborg transferred in from Arizona Western He's got a 23 point night Nine point advantage Here's Jones. He won't take long. He wants it back. Challenge three and a wow. five, and it goes! Ashton Hardaway with a chance for a four-point play. I say why, and the question is, why lose your defensive discipline and fly at a shooter? Hardaway jumps into him just a little bit. So it's an interesting call that's made. Lindenberg is flying by his side. Hardaway, though, with a crafty move to initiate the contact gets a call to go in his favor and this thing is still not over what's interesting about jumping into the oncoming defender is with the path that was taken by Lindeborg I don't think he had to jump into him no. I think he was going to collide with him anyway uh, no I, I, I'm with you the review right now is to judge whether or not this was a two or a three That's a two when he steps in to initiate the contact he went from a three-point shooter to a two-point shooter stepping inside the line a chance for a three-point play in defense of Lindenberg 
he's as new to the game of basketball as maybe anyone in college basketball. So the, just the small things like that that we take for granted when we're around the game our entire life, that's new stuff for that kid. 11 high school games before ending up in junior college. Here's Ashton Hardaway. That would have made it a two-possession game. Instead, 24 seconds left. Blazers trying to run some clock. Up seven. Memphis will put him back at the free throw line with the foul from Jaquan Walton. 18 seconds away. A win against a ranked Memphis team for just the second time in school history. When you come back and coach at your alma mater like Andy Kennedy and Penny Hardaway have both done to steal a line from the SEC, it just means more. And you pour everything into it at any level as a head coach, but with just a little extra pressure, like this extra tension on you, it seems like at all times when you're leading your alma mater. You've had success as a player, you know what the vision is for your program as you're building it. I think that was the first time you sat down the entire game. It is. Penny has nice Penny has still not sat down. That one coming from Buddha Johnson, sophomore out of Huntsville. 18 seconds remaining. Blazers by nine. This will be the third consecutive loss for Penny Hardaway's team. First time in his program reign. And with 10 seconds left out of bounds to UAB. Time we rattled through a bunch of teams that are threats to win that AAC conference tournament, put UAB on that list as well. I really liked what I saw out of this UAB team today. Gaines isn't going to always knock in four or five threes, but the speed that he plays with, the toughness that he brought today, and the play of Lindenborg, just a complete effort minus the turnovers by AK and his guys. It is a season high for points with 97 for UAB. The Blazers go to 5-2 in the American. And with another